Guys, we just have to kick it off. This is a brand new world that the fans are going to be walking into. There is a lot that they need to know. So I am curious, how did the two of you prep for this? Did you read the books? Did you change your workout routine? Like, break it down for me, Jay. Kick it off. So for me, this was going to be one of the first times where I didn't have to do the fighting. So no workout routine was involved at all. <laughs> it, in the past, it has been, but this was one of the few times when it wasn't. Um, I went to the books and immediately stopped because I was like, you know what? Mm -mm. I have to go for the journey of the screenplays that as written um, and not project too much into the future. Something interesting happened when people found out I was playing this part. They would say to me, Victor is one of my favorite villains. And I was like, villain? Villain. <laughs> so I, Everyone's I, a hero in their own eyes. Absolutely. But I literally didn't understand why they would be saying that. So I stopped reading the books immediately. And I was like, nope, I'm going on this journey clean. And I'm so glad that I did. So I love that. And Janetta, how about for you? What was your prep work like in order to step into this bloodthirsty world? So my prep work consisted of, well, I was, first of all, a huge fan of the books as a kid. That was my introduction into vampire worlds. So I read the books and then I was a huge fan of the Vampire Diaries. Also read those books, uh, read Twilight, like, you know, I've done it all. <laughs> so yeah, I think coming in and playing Sonia Karp, who I very much relate to growing up very shy and very like secluded, like it, it was, it was, it just made sense. The whole thing for me. <laughs> <laughs> I love that you mentioned the other franchises because there are quite a lot of other vampire properties out there. There are a lot of different rules. So right now we're going to make it easy for the fans and do a little Vampire Academy 101. And I'm going to throw out a term for you guys. You decide between the two of you who has the best definition for that term. And then we'll have like a glossary. There's no pop quiz at the end, so don't worry. This is kind of <laughs> right now. All right, first, let's break down the three different types of vampires that we have in Vampire Academy. What is a strigoi? Well, there are actually four. Ah! Yes. So there's the royal Maroi, which is who I am. I belong to one of the 12 royal bloodlines. Then there are the non-royal Maroi, who are my daughters. Mm -hmm. They are adopted, so they don't claim, they don't get the royal status that I have. And that's one of the things that bothers my characters, the inequality in the society. Mm -hmm. Then there are the Dom peers who are a human Maroi vampire hybrid who have special abilities, skills, powers, they fight, they're bad. They, you know, beat them all up. And then there's the Strigoi who are the evil vampires and uh, they're our sworn enemies. They're trying to destroy us and the Dom peers protect us Maroi from them. Mm -hmm. And let's talk about specialties. Janetta, can you talk to me a little bit about that? Because this is really cool and something that's totally different for Vampire Academy. It's so cool. Uh, so our royal and non-royal Maroi vampires specialize in elemental magic. So it depends on which one. Everyone can manipulate each element a little bit. And then there's an, uh, an element called spirit, which is very rare to get. We don't know much about it. But it's very cool. It's earth, air, wind, fire. And it's, it's, I mean, it's so cool. And then spirit, which is, what is that? We don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, but something tells me we're going to find out. We're going to find yeah. out. <laughs> Um, Jay, I love that you that you checked me and brought up the fact that we do have royals in this show. And it's kind of something that hasn't really been challenged. These are vampires in a, in a ruling system that's been around for hundreds of thousands of years. Yeah. What kind of challenges does the regal element pro, like give to this series? Mm, that's a great question. It's you know, the Royal Maroi are the ruling class and yeah. um, we're given, you know, status and protection and all of these unfair advantages, which my character feels that they are unfair. I am a, a politician in this world. And, you know, this is an underground society of vampires that coexist with the world as we know it. And in this world, because my daughters are not royal like me and don't get the same treatment, and because I feel that the Dom peers are essentially discriminated against, I want to find balance and equality for everyone in this world. So mm -hmm. that's how the status uh, 
the ranks and the castes exist in this world. I love it. And there's also yeah. some secrets hiding behind their eyes. The eye color is very telling. Can you guys yes. explain that for the fans? Yes. So when you're asked to show whether you're royal or non-royal, you if a royal, your eyes are gold. So you just blink and they'll show. And then if you're non-royal, they're like pretty lilac color. Right. You prefer that color <laughs> as a non-royal You're like, myself. Right. I'm not biased or anything. I'm just like showing your ID. Not biased at all. <laughs> um, Julie, uh, when she, I've covered Vampire Diaries since my entire career. And, and she always loved the practical fangs versus adding them in post. Did mm -hmm. either of you guys get fitted for your fangs? <laughs> I got fit for fangs. Yeah. They had to do a mouth mold and everything and they matched my teeth color. And it was, I got to see like my teeth do this after they did the mold. It was very cool. Yeah. People cool have real fangs and they're sharp. <laughs> yeah. Jay, you're feeling a little jealous. I am actually, <laughs> I mean, I don't want to spoil anything, but you know, my character is a is a lover and a politician, so there weren't a lot of opportunities to flash my fangs, but um, <laughs> maybe maybe season two, hopefully. For all of the book lovers out there, I know you did, you've stopped yourself on the books. Do you know enough about the differences, though, that Julie has implemented in the show versus the books, and, and do you want to prime the fans for anything? Oh, that's a good question. You know what? The books were written oh my gosh what 15 years ago I mean it's 2022 so it's a lot more contemporary it's a lot more modern it's a lot more like present day there's a lot more diversity which is amazing um I think that's like the main difference but it's something to like really look forward to you can see you know Cece as our black leading lady and you know people will look at that and be like oh my gosh she looks like me and she's number one you know so that's that's amazing it's it's a good change I think and I've read enough yeah. of the books to know that you know at the heart of the books it seems to be about this uh powerful female friendship and how the 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 bond between two women or let's say two people can transcend space, time, and class. And I think that that's a central theme of the books that we are true to on the show. Yeah. Are you guys ready for the shippers? Actually, Janetta, are you ready for the shippers? <laughs> the shippers? Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> what is this? <laughs> Those are people who- The um, fans who are so obsessed with the relationships and root for the couples. <laughs> I think that they're going to be uh, rooting after they see the first two episodes. Yeah, I think so. Possibly. <laughs> <laughs>